We're the Indie Project, B and Theo, and we've been living and travelling the world in vans for the past six years. We're currently renovating an abandoned stone barn in Portugal to turn into a beautiful tiny home for us and our cats, Gingy Bear and Fernando. Follow our journey from the very beginning as we document the whole process of creating an off-grid home. Welcome back to our YouTube channel where we're living off-grid and building an epic homestead here in central Portugal. We're currently nearing a really exciting stage of our barn conversion where we can actually move in. <laughs> this has been a long time coming but there's also other stuff going on here and we're really excited to share it all with you. So there's been some very exciting developments inside our home. As you can see here we've got lots of boxes and this is our sofa and B is just opening something really special. This right here is a really special piece of art sent to us by Underlucky Stars who have kindly sponsored today's video. And it's actually what the stars looked like above Portugal when Theo asked me to be his girlfriend way back in 2005. <laughs> Under Lucky Stars makes beautiful personalised star maps showing the unique alignment of the stars in a place and time chosen by you. By entering the location and time of your special moment you wish to commemorate, Under Lucky Stars will then tell you exactly how the stars look at that time in a beautiful print of a map of the sky, showing you the constellations and locations of all the stars that were above you on your special moment. Their method of locating the stars are verified by NASA astrophysicists to ensure their accuracy. I've just been walking around in circles trying to figure out where we're actually going to put this because it looks so nice everywhere. So there's over 15 designs to choose from and it's a fun personal gift experience that you can create your very own stunning star map. It's printed on museum quality thick matte art paper. There's also six beautiful framed options to choose from to create a gift unique for you that will look wonderful in your home. We get absolutely stunning night skies out here in Portugal and under lucky stars are deeply committed to keeping our skies clear and free from space litter by supporting the International Dark Skies Association. This is a really wonderful and unique gift and with Valentine's Day just around the corner, they're offering our viewers an exclusive 10% discount. So just head to underluckystars.com forward slash indie projects and use the code indie projects to get your loved ones a wonderfully unique gift this Valentine's Day. So I'm just getting some tools together and I know I left some in the truck and I've got Ricky with me today, which is amazing because I've got a lot of physical labour that needs doing and some quite technical bits that I can't do on my own. Basically, I need to finish the goat fencing today because they are arriving in just two days time. I'm very excited, but everyone knows that goats are escape artists. So I need to build a compound where they cannot escape from whatsoever. When I woke up this morning, found everything in place The birds were singing pretty songs, the sun kissed me on my face and It feels so good to be alive, it feels so good to see the light I got this sudden feeling, like now's the time to start I got a big idea in my head, I got a dream down in my heart and I'm praying that you'll help me now, I'm praying that you'll show me how
things are going really nicely today as planned and we're probably about I don't know three quarters of the way through finishing this fencing and it's looking so nice I'm so happy with it hopefully this is going to keep the goats in and we've also debated whether maybe even bringing the chickens in here as well to live with the goats but that's another video for sure we need to keep going and focus on getting this fence finished <laughs> doing an absolutely fantastic job with the fence I'm sure you can see it behind me I'm at an area where the fencing is done and dusted and it's actually really high which is fantastic and what you need and the method they've been doing with it has worked out really well Theo and his tractor as usual have made a very good team using it for the tension with the ratchet strap has been a really good idea because it means getting the actual fence in place and nice and tight has been a lot easier I really don't know how they would have done it without the tractor but as usual the tractor saves the day can't big up this tractor enough so yeah it's going really well fingers crossed the rest of the day stays like this happy the fencing is pretty much finished me and Ricky worked our asses off like non-stop making sure this fence was ready for the goatees and if you step back a little bit B will show you you'll be able to see that the fence is actually on quite a slope yeah there's, this side sloped isn't it there's lots of different slopes to contend with there's lots of mounds so it wasn't as easy as just fencing like a really simple flat paddock area it was a lot more complicated than that and we had stone underneath the ground to contend with as well which is always tricky but it's lovely and taut it's really nice taut fence i'm pretty sure this is definitely going to keep them in i'm six foot three 
and you can see B steps back a little bit. You can kind of see it's up to my shoulders here. 1.5 meters of fencing. We went for the, the more robust, stronger, thinner fencing in terms of like thinner squares, not the sheep fencing. So this should really keep them in. I really hope it does. I guess we've got to find out, haven't we? <laughs> the weakest point is the gate. So we have to see if they can get over the gate or through the gate, but I'm sure they can't. If they can, what I'm going to do is fix some extra battens on the gate and put some barbed wire along the top so they won't like that. But I think they're going to have a very lovely home here. I mean, just look at it. We've got a massive amount of space for these goats. We're getting four goats and they're just going to have so much freedom and they won't live in here full time constantly. We will move them around the land. We will take them out to graze. And the reason we're getting them is because one, we love goats and two, they need rehoming and three, they're great for like land clearance. So we've got lots of brush and weeds and stuff that they love eating that we don't particularly like clearing ourselves. Well, they have a great time doing it. So I've just spotted Theo with a huge stone attached to the back of the tractor. I've got a slight idea about what he's doing, but I could be completely wrong. That is huge. So it sounds crazy, but I've decided to build a little goat henge, like Stonehenge, but slightly smaller for the goats. And I was reading some information online about the goats find it really useful to have stone in their enclosure. We've got plenty of stone around the land. It's just moving it that is the tricky part. I think they like it because it's good for their feet, it's good for their hooves. They can maybe like sharpen them off, keep them, keep their hooves down. I don't really know, I need to do more, more looking up on that, but I just saw that it's really good for them. So what I've come up with is this slab is absolutely massive and I've already moved an even bigger one, probably twice the size of this, which is probably about a ton in weight, which is crazy. And that won't go in the back of the transfer box because it just won't lift it. But what I've found is a really cool way. So if I was just to drag this as it is, it will just wanna go into the ground because I'm pulling it uphill, all the force will go into the stone and we'll pull it into the ground, just making big divots and causing problems to the ground. And also it's a lot harder on the tractor. But what I've found is if I put the tow rope over the transfer box and lift the transfer box up, that takes all of the pressure off the stone. And basically it just glides along <laughs> the floor so nicely I along need the to ground. See this. So I'll show you what I'm doing right now. I need to see this. Pretty nice, isn't it? It's so cool. And this stone that I moved, like on my own. I can't actually believe that you did this on your own. It's just crazy. It's a meter, meter high stone. I dug it in to the ground like a foot. So it's super secure because I don't want the goats jumping on it. And then it not, and then it moving around, but that is not going anywhere. Look, I'm a goat. <laughs> but yeah, so they can jump off here, onto here, hang around on the stones. And then obviously this one's going to be another stepping stone up. But right now I've got that there, but I need to move it into position. And I don't think I'll be able to move that by hand. So I've got an idea up my sleeve. <laughs> I literally cannot budget at all. How are you going to do that? Are you going to push it? Ah, yes. Just 
need to figure out where we want it but i think in the front there i think around here would yeah. be nice like this area yeah. maybe <laughs> So now I've got some leverage on it, pushed it into the position and this is how you make a really heavy stone really lightweight. I mean, I can move that with a couple of fingers and what I'm going to do is put these rollers in, roll it into the position right, <laughs> what I need like the flint stones. <laughs> A bit tough this uphill. I like the. You want to get it closer? I should have a breather. <laughs> oh. So heavy. I love this kind of work, it's so much fun. Definitely helps you sleep better at night, doesn't it? Just being creative with like natural materials and just really just playing around on the land and creating cool things is what it's all about. This is why I signed up for this life because it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so after I get my breath back, I'll move this into position. But now they've got a really good like little area that they can even just sleep on, sit Shop on, jump on. And yeah, I love the name Goat Henge. <laughs> I might have to scribe a little sign into that standing stone in the in the far corner. Yeah, I'm gonna I'll lift the stone. Right. Take this one out. Just put it under there. Right, and then you wanna get that post further back. This over here? Yeah. Okay. So lift up. How are you gonna that's the wrong way. I lift. There. Oh, I think that's a really good position there. Yeah, that's not bad, is it? And like little grasses and things will grow up there and they can nibble those. Well, eventually. we'll fill that in with like soil, soil so they yeah. don't. Oh, yeah, good idea actually. Just so we can stabilise it so it doesn't rock about. Okay, walk around on that. That feels pretty stable. Even a goat. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> We've got all this leftover soil from digging out the uh, gate posts. So I'm going to use this to kind of fill up some of the gaps and stabilize it even more. And then water it down, turn it into mud, and it will harden up. Blend it into the landscape. That's what you're doing, you're landscaping, aren't you? Like it's been here a hundred years. <laughs> this is the millennium old goat henge. <laughs> the only goat henge in the world. 
Not built by humans, built by goats. <laughs> Yeah. Start making the mud cake. That's cool. There's only one thing to do and that's try it out. Ten on my goat. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> if it can take my weight, it can definitely take a goat. The main fence, well the whole thing, it's finished but there's some bits that we need to do before it's ready for them to move into. We need to tie up some loose ends, cut some excess bits off that don't need to be there. So those are the things we're going to do next. Hopefully they won't take too long. I can already see as I look here there's a bit that needs tying down or cutting. I'm not sure what we're going to do with that yet but those are the final things and then the fencing is 100% finished. So it was just these two posts that needed trimming and tacking down and they're done now. The next bit is to go basically in all the corners where the fencing overlaps we need to tie them up so we're gonna go and do that now. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Hopefully this won't take too long. This is just where the the fencing has joined so we need to just wire it together so it doesn't flap around some bits are worse than others so let's see how easy this is let's firstly undo it it's only thin that wire so it should be yeah. easy to cut and easy to kind of manipulate it blends in nicely i wonder how much i'm gonna need do you reckon that much yeah just a bit of time It's all coming together now. This will be done. We gotta do all four corners like B just mentioned with this wire. Get them all fastened down so there's no kind of weak areas that they could uh, maybe escape out of. It's gonna be like a high security prison in here when we finish with it. And then we can move on to building the bed inside of their horse box. <laughs> it is stupidly fun being in the back of the tractor. <laughs> you could have given me some warming. So Theo thinks it's hilarious to do that, I don't, but it's not the smoothest ride, but it is very fun. <laughs> Perfect driving. to bring the generator and the chop saw down to the work site because making a cut list and walking backwards and forwards like I don't know it's at least a couple hundred meters gets very tiring it's like kilometers up and down by the time you've done the end of the day but we've got it all here in the back of the tractor 
and we're ready to start making this bed. So we've changed around our initial idea that we had for the layout of this horse box because we were just walking backwards and forwards and we're really trying to maximize the space that we have here. So what we did is we went around and we found all of the scrap wood that we had left over on the property and we're going to reuse that for the goat bed. We've actually got quite a bit which is really useful. So if you step back a little bit you can see that there's another nice size ramp here. So we're thinking the goatees can walk up here when they go to bed in the morning. Go to bed in the morning? Go to bed in the evening. <laughs> <laughs> Come up the ramp and then this will be their socialising area. <laughs> If it's rainy or whatever, they want a drink, they want water. We got this a couple of days ago and I'm going to pin that to here and that will have their lovely food that they like eating. So at night they don't need to go hungry. Exactly, and then we've got a water container here which will, which will hang somewhere. But it just means that they've got plenty of space in this area. And also it's a lot easier to build here because everything's square. Before I was going to do all the building in this corner and everything's really awkward shapes. So what we've done is we've just cut up some of that scrap wood that we found and we've kind of come up with a rough design. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a lower level bed down yeah. here. Sleeping platform. Sleeping platform, which is going to be really big actually. It's like, it's a really decent size, but we are getting four goats. The problem is we don't know how big these goats are. <laughs> We've only seen photos of them. I think two of them are about a year and a half old, and then the other two are- Mature. Mature. <laughs> Not quite OAPs, but they're getting on a bit. So a nice platform here, maybe the OAPs can chill down here. <laughs> and then we've got a higher platform here that would be nice where another goat or a couple of goats can fit up here. And what we're thinking is this side to get up to the higher platform because it's quite a big jump. I know goats are good at jumping, so they might just hop up, no problem. We don't want them to smack their head off the ceiling. But yeah, no, we, we made sure there's enough room that they won't hit their head off the ceiling. They can stand up here, no problem. And then what we're gonna do is we'll probably have like a little platform or a ladder a so they can access up here, yeah, a ramp. A ramp, and also, let me just turn it. You would turn it. <laughs> like Theo said, we don't know the goats yet. We don't know what their behavior is like, what they like, what they don't like, how big they are, or any of that kind of stuff. So we, we're just kind of having to guess at the moment. And then once they're living with us, we can make any changes that we need to. Exactly, there's no problem to kind of swap things around, is there? Like, we could rip all of this out, it's no problem. Yeah. Redo it. We just adapt to how they are. Like a <laughs> Surely, I think it looks more like a llama. Are you filming that? Of course I wasn't. You what? No, I wasn't filming that. <laughs> I thought we were finished with the flooring, but turns out all the wonky boards that were left over, we're going to use for the platform for them to sleep on. <laughs> It's a perfect no waste situation because these otherwise probably would have just been burnt. Can't use them for anything else. They're so warped. I'm just going to pin these down and then we need to do the top, their little platform, some steps up. Jobs are good. We're getting there. It feels like I'm building a camper van again. <laughs> Actually comfortable. Is it? Is it ever comfortable <laughs> to lie on a hard wooden floor? It looks really good because we use the same floorboards that we used in the barn. Oh but I'm just trying to pretend to be a goat. I imagine they're gonna sleep like this way. I imagine they're gonna sleep this way. 
Why do you think that? Oh, we need to hook up the solar for the electric blankets uh, for them. Yeah, obviously. And the, and the uh, wood burner needs to stop it. <laughs> no, they're going to love it. It's a great space. It's really big. The only thing I've got to do now is fasten this down so that's secure. And I haven't managed to do everything I wanted to achieve today, but we're losing light. It's about to get dark and we've got so much tidying up to do. I'm going to build their ramp up tomorrow. Bits and pieces. <laughs> I'm going to attach this somewhere in here so they've got their food. Make sure they've got water. So we've got quite a few hours from when they arrive. We're going to pick them up quite early. So we should arrive back here about lunchtime-ish, maybe 2 p.m. And then we've got a good couple of hours before they actually come and sleep in their, in their little house. So <laughs> I hope they like it anyway, yeah. but we're gonna call it a night for now. And we'll catch you in the morning when we're heading to pick up the guns. We are on our way to get our goats. It's goat day. <laughs> Today is officially goat day, but we've got to go. We've got a goat. Go and get them. <laughs> we've got to go to get them. We've got to go to get another vehicle because our four girls aren't going to fit in the back of here. Definitely not. So we're actually heading to another YouTuber's place who kindly offered us the use of their vehicle. It's a woman called Cindy Vine who is also converting a barn. So go and check her out very very appreciative of her offering us the use of her van don't know how else we would have got them so we have just arrived on cindy vines farm and it's such a beautiful place b is just organizing the tarp for the back of the van that we were borrowing but this is cindy say hi hi there <laughs> and she's got a youtube channel like we said so go check it out because she's doing some really cool projects on her property here in central portugal and you can see her stone barn in the distance. So if you want to see more of what she's doing, go over to her channel. But there's some beautiful views from up here. And right now we need to get the van sorted because we need to go pick up these goats. We also picked up some old blankets so we can put them on the back to kind of soften the ride a little bit. We are in the van. It's a long time since we've been in a van. <laughs> and we're on our way to get the goats. This is such an exciting day. Are you excited, Theo? I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm not sure what to expect, but I think I'm excited. Theo's a mixture of excited and, nervous. and very nervous because, well, we don't know what to expect. We've not met these goats. We don't know what they're like, but now we're about to meet them. Well, not right now. We've got a bit of a drive. <laughs> So we now have the goats in our possession and we're on our way home, driving nice and slow. It's actually quite a straight journey, which is good because we want them to be comfortable. I'm just shocked at how good they are at traveling. Like there's no noise, they're just completely chilled, just hanging out in the back, no problems whatsoever. Before we traveled with the goats, the best animal we've ever traveled with has got to be Gingy Bear because she's so good at traveling. But these girls, they're the winners. Successful journey, the goats are home. It's time to let them out. See what they do. Nice. Don't be scared. Don't be they're a bit nervous, understandably. Thank you, time. They've come out, they're browsing, they've just been eating the brambles, which is brilliant. We've just filled up their water and we're just going to try and leave them be for a little bit, get used to the place without us being around, give them some treats as well, you know, get them comfortable here. But it's really nice to see them in the space. <sighs> yes, yeah, it's really exciting. So the goats are settling in really nicely. Bee's just sorting out all of their food into this area that we set up. So basically got a metal frame on the side of the horse box where they this can- This is just their nighttime feed station, isn't it? They're exactly. gonna have a bigger one outside as well. Yeah, we're gonna get them a nice big 
food station outside, so they've got plenty of food all the time, but there's plenty to eat around here anyway, and they've been nibbling little leaves off the trees and stuff. They're having a great time. And then over here, we're gonna have their water. So we've got these plastic buckets, basically, with a little hook on them, and we can just hook them over here, and we're gonna have one for their water, and then another one over here when I go back to the city for their minerals. The girls are now a little bit more settled in and they're just chilling over here, been giving them some olive branches which they've really seemed to enjoy which is great. And then over here we've now put the straw in their bedroom so it's nice and over padded. I imagine they're just going to kick this all off but we shall see. Some hay for night time and as Theo said they've got water there and they will also have a mineral bucket. And then out here somewhere, probably around here We'll be putting an outside hay feeder for during the day. Just haven't decided where that'll go yet. But they're enjoying it. It's really nice to see them eating things and it's good to see that they've uh, <laughs> settled in really well. And I look forward to them getting to know us and trusting us and allowing us to spend time with them. always interesting when you first get new animals and they don't know you and then after a while they become best friends with you <laughs> and I'm looking forward to to that because it will be really nice and goats are really wonderful creatures <laughs> and I'm looking forward to them growing with us here these are the first four-legged non-cat animals that we've ever had living with us in our lives so we're learning along with them and we really look forward to them getting used to us here and us getting used to them so thank you so much for watching today's video and we'll see you on the next one